Hello citizens and welcome back. In today's video I would like to take a look at the recently announced changes to medical beds and the 4.0 announcement. As always, if you like this video, sacrifice a like and a comment to the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more. And a special thanks to all of you uh, because the channel reached 3000 subscribers this week, so thank you. Uh, so with one of the 323.1 uh, PTU patches, uh, there is a major update to how medical beds work. Uh, so up until now, only tier 1 medical beds allowed players to respawn in them. Uh, but with 323.1, CAG are changing this to allow players to respawn in every tier of medical beds. Uh, the limitation on this is that depending on the tier, uh, the range is limited. So uh, in the original patch notes, we see that tier 3 medical beds uh, only work 20 kilometers away and tier 2 medical beds work up to 50 kilometers away. Uh, according to the patch notes, this is to reduce the brutal respawn experience that players have. Uh, overall, it's, it's a very interesting change. It does uh, kind of ruin gameplay for a lot of people who do medical beacons. And I'm wondering why CAG are doing this now. Uh, I have a few ideas and I'm going to expand on this in a, in a future video, I'm going to do a deep dive on why they could possibly be doing this. Uh, but up until then, it's a very interesting change and it actually goes uh, against what they have done initially with medical beds. And uh, it's possible it has something to do with how people use medical beacons or possibly uh, with the impending rework of the medical gameplay. Or it could actually even mean that medical gameplay is not as far as far along as CAG would like. So they are basically removing that one respawn hurdle. Uh, but the, there are two things of note on this. Uh, number one, even if you respawn in your medical bed that's close by, you're going to lose your gear. So you have to have spare kit on your ship or in the vehicle that you're going to be using for respawn. And second, the distance values, I think they're going to tune them some more. Uh, because 20 and 50 kilometers away, it, it seems a bit much, uh, depending on, I guess, how big the armistice around distribution centers is going to end up being, uh, so that you can basically land your medical ship and then take a ground vehicle uh, and still be within the respawn distance. Uh, so we will see what, what they do with this. Uh, but a lot of people are upset, understandably, uh, because it does disrupt a lot of medical beacon gameplay. Uh, but I think uh, ultimately it's not going to matter all that much uh, because not everyone has a medical ship and not everyone's going to have the new Ursa that's presumably coming with Invictus on Friday. And with that being said, let's move on to the big announcement. Um, so on Wednesday we had the roadmap roundup for this week and it has two interesting things in it. Uh, number one... Uh, Alpha 4.0 is targeted for Q3 this year. So that's going to be around CitizenCon. And there is no news on a 32024 patch, uh, which makes me think there is not going to be one. Uh, what I think they are going to do is they are going to have 323.1 with Invictus stuff and some fixes and the Retaliator Gold standard. And then they will do... 323.2, which is going to have all the missing cargo stuff that we didn't get in the 0 .0 release. And that's basically going to be the Q2 patch for us, uh, which I think is acceptable. Uh, because the whole cargo refactor thing and physicalized hangers, the, it, it's a pretty big change, so I think it, it could even be its own patch if they wanted to, uh, but I think they're going to still keep it as 323.x patch. So we will see how that works. Uh, but for Alpha 4.0, there is a lot of interesting stuff. So obviously they're doing server meshing, uh, V1 for that. They With that, they need to do the mission and transit system refactor. So they support server meshing. Uh, I believe all that is going to, all that entails is uh, reworking the two systems to be able to transfer missions and transit systems between servers, uh, but still very important for future development. Then they are adding all the pyro planets. So we're going to have working pyro in 4.0 in Q3. Uh, they're also adding all the pyro space stations. They're adding 
outposts. I think that's going to be the pyro outpost, but it's, I think they're, they might also change some of the outposts in Stanton, which would be very cool. Uh, we're getting the jump points, obviously, to be able to move between systems. So I think that's going to launch as a whole thing, two systems with a jump point between them. And we're getting the solar burst uh, environmental hazard for Pyro, uh, which was already in the Pyro test for those of you that played it. Uh, but now it's actually on the roadmap and it's actually going to be a part of the patch. Uh, but now the interesting part. So we're getting life support systems. Uh, I'm assuming that's a version zero on this. Uh, it apparently only counts oxygen. Uh, and it's going to be a manageable component, which is interesting. So maybe we'll be able to swap out the life support generator. They're also targeting engineering for 4.0, which I think is very interesting because we have a very limited engineering and resource network test going on in Arena Commander as an experimental game mode right now. Um, and I don't think it's very far along into development, uh, but then again, they do have six months uh, to work on it. So uh, maybe they can get it out the door. Uh, then we have Charged Rain. So that's going to be uh, part of engineering, I believe, uh, to remove distortion damage or possibly power up things that are unpowered. Probably a requirement for engineering, uh, multi-tool updates. So we do know that the multi-tool has an extended functionality in Squadron 42. They showed this off at CitizenCon, I believe. And they're going to be porting this capability to the PU. Uh, so I don't think it's going to do a whole lot. I think... Oh, there we go. Uh, I think it's just going to change the UI. It's now going to use batteries. And there's going to be improved handling, uh, as they say in the release notes. Then they're implementing fire hazards and fire extinguishers, which is, again, a part of engineering, I believe. Or at least that's how it was packaged during CitizenCon. Uh, so things will now burn uh, if you get hit or if your fuel tank get, gets hit. Uh, so that, that's going to be interesting. So a lot of uh, engineering and sort of ship management changes going on with 4.0. Uh, the MFD rework, which is... Uh, uh, which is a big one, in my opinion. Uh, they're going to be building everything with building blocks uh, and a manufacturer-based visual overhaul. So I suppose all the MFDs are going to look a little bit different depending on the manufacturer of your ship. Uh, they're adding some animals. Uh, I, I guess they're going to be adding this to Pyro and, St and Stanton because it's uh, kind of a universal animal that they're adding. Uh, new options for player customization. We, we knew this was coming. Uh, in the next major patch because they said that they have the ability to extend the customizer very easily now which is very nice as well as face piercings so uh, very very nice the, a new sort of add-on to the existing system and the Zeus ES variant uh, I think it's only going to be one of a few ships that are going to be coming with 4.0 uh, but this is the one that they are putting on the roadmap because I believe they have it very far along in the pipeline and then we also had some changes to 323 and 323.1, uh, namely the Tally Gold Standard and Vehicle Modularity, which is a part of the Tally Gold Standard. And uh, that's it. Uh, very eventful roadmap roundup uh, this week. Uh, we will see how the roadmap changes over the next couple months. Uh, maybe they will indeed add a Q2 patch, but I don't think they will. I think it's just going to be 323.2 or 0.3 that's going to add all the missing stuff, and that's going to be our uh, Q2 patch. And yeah. Uh, so with that being said, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Fly safe, and I will see you in the verse.